This has been yet another wonderful week at Barnesville First United Methodist Church, amen? Every week is such a good week here. We had the blessing of the animals last uh, Sunday afternoon, and then we had a church-wide picnic, which was great fun. I will tell you that I have never before blessed a toad or a horse or a sheep. Dogs, yes. Cats, yes. But uh, it was quite exciting. I really want to say a special thank you to Patsy, who plays our hostess for most of our church events, and we, she was a great hostess. Thanks to those who provided food and those who helped with the blessing of the animals. What a joy it was to be a part of that. And then Wednesday night, here you had this great Sunday night experience. Then we come Wednesday night, and what did we do? Take me out to the ball game, right? Complete with peanuts and Cracker Jacks. If you're not joining us on our Wednesday night dinners, you are missing a great opportunity for some fellowship. And actually, when these first started, we were going to have like either a prayer time or a Bible study. But I'll be honest with you, everybody was like, can we just visit? Can we just be in each other's company? And that's what it's turned into, is just a great fellowship time. Now, our children and our youth, they go down and they have a lesson and they do a little bit of study. But the adults, we just get to enjoy each other's company. And then today, you may have noticed that our choir has grown by three scarecrows on the front lawn. And did you notice that when you came in? Uh, it is so, so wonderful. Uh, many of the businesses along Main Street have been encouraged to put those scarecrows out for this season, um, leading up to October 31st for our fall festival. And we wanted to let the community know that we stand with them that we are a part of this community. We want to be a part of this community. And our thanks to Douglas and Hope Bankston, Carol Ann and Bob Bankston, and also to Emily Leverett for making and putting those up. Now, I want to encourage you. Um, some of you do not own smartphones. You don't do social media, and that's okay. But for those of you who do, um, and maybe your children do. I want to encourage you to get out there someday and take a picture in front of this with the scarecrows. You join the choir for just a minute and then put that on social media if you do that and put hashtag Barnesville First UMC. Uh, so that's a way to let the community know that we are here and that we stand with them. So I encourage you to be a part of that. I think our choir is going to, are y'all going out there? They're planning to go out there after the service today and have their picture made with the, with the scarecrow. So I'm so excited about that. What a joy it is to be a part of a church that is so invested in the community. Uh, there's so many things we do with Rebuild Lamar, with the other things that we do. We are a part of this community, and our scripture today is a reminder that God calls us to be the church, not just on Sunday, but on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and every single day of the week. Today we're going to read from Daniel 12, 1 through 3, but before we do that, let us pray again. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be acceptable to you, my rock and my redeemer. I pray, Lord, that you would give us ears to hear and a heart to respond to your word spoken into our lives today. Amen. You know, I want to point out today, the Bells did an amazing job. Aren't they just awesome? We just love all the work that they do. But I can't see the clock this morning. So you're on warning. Uh, usually I try to cut it down in about 15 or 20 minutes, but I can't even see the clock. So we're good today, right? Are we good? I just want to make sure we're good. All right, let us turn in our Bibles now and read from Daniel 12, 1 through 3, and it will be on the screen for you. Uh, we love to make that convenient. But hear now the word of God. At that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish, such as has never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
Our Hebrew word to live by today is halal, which means to shine. To shine means to illuminate or to bring glory to God. Our scripture reminds us that we are called to shine the light of Christ into the world, into the world every single day, not just on Sundays. I don't know of how many of you are familiar with the book of Daniel. Is that a book you've spent a lot of time in? It's not often a very familiar book to most people. It was actually written when the Israelites were uh, in exile in Babylon. And Daniel was one of those who was in exile, and the writing is a mix of vision and prophecies, and I just read one of the prophecies, one of the visions that, that Daniel had, and it's all designed to give us hope when we face difficulty, because in this world we will have trouble. That's a scriptural promise, so we know we'll have trouble. But it also contains two of the most powerful and well-known stories of faith. The story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. You know that story, right? We're going to talk a little bit about that. And then the story of Daniel in the lion's den, another story of, of God's deliverance. Both of these are stories of the way God is with us always. God sustains us no matter what we face in life. First, there's the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These three faithful men of God, they refuse to worship any other God rather than the one true God. As a result, King Nebuchadnezzar threw them into a fiery furnace. The fire was so hot it actually consumed the guards that threw them in there. But then something strange happened. When King Nebuchadnezzar looked into the fire, he said there was another in the fire, a fourth person who had the appearance of God. Then the three men emerged from the fiery furnace untouched by the flames, and this display of God's grace and deliverance made King Nebuchadnezzar worship the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What a beautiful testimony. But then along comes King Nebuchadnezzar's son, King Belshazzar, who forgot the lessons of his father. How many of us have done that? King Belshazzar, it said, worshiped the gods of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Idols. When writing appeared on the wall, the Israelite Daniel, known as a wise man, was called to interpret this writing. And Daniel then predicted the downfall of King Belshazzar. He says in verse 23a and 23b, he says, You have exalted yourself against the Lord of heaven. You have praised the gods of silver and gold, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which do not see or hear or know. But the God in whose power is your very breath, and to whom belong all your ways, you have not honored. Daniel explained, when you praise the creation rather than the creator, your kingdom will come crashing down. That very night, Belshazzar was killed. Then Darius received the kingdom, and because of Daniel's reputation, Darius gave him a, a, a big place in the, a position of honor. And of course, that made the others very jealous. Those who were jealous launched a plot to get rid of Daniel. The courtiers convinced the king that Daniel needed to be put to death because he didn't worship Darius. He worshiped another god. So Daniel was then thrown into the lion's den. But Daniel was not harmed. These two stories of deliverance, the story of Daniel in the lion's den and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, these are stories of great faith in the face of trials. God delivers Daniel. God delivers Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God delivers you and me 
in the face of trials. And because of our faith, lives are changed. When we face trials with faith and courage, we shine a light of Christ into the world. We have the ability to change hearts and lives the way we face whatever life throws at us can be a way that God is glorified. In the latter half of the book of Daniel, we see his prophecy about the end of times. It's not a pretty story. It says we'll suffer. It's described as a time of great anguish, such as never occurred before. There shall be a time of anguish such as never occurred since nations first came into existence, it says. So we know these are going to be difficult, difficult times. But the book of Daniel also reminds us when we are thrown into the fiery furnace of life, when we are thrown into the lion's den, there is one who will deliver us, a Savior. Everyone who believes will be saved. I want us to hear verse 2 again. Here's what it says. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt, reminding us that we have a choice with the way we live. Will we worship the gods of this world, or will we Will we worship the one true God? There are many who are like these kings of old. They, they, worship, they worship the creation rather than the creator. They worship the things of this world, gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood and stone. You fill in the blank. But the gods of this world do not see or hear or know. We pursue often what pleases us, our self-centered desires, instead of the things of God. When it is God who gives us our very breath. Like the kings of old, we sometimes forget who and whose we are. Now hear verse 3 again. Those who are wise... Those who are wise, okay, will shine like the brightness of the sky. And those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. God is telling us exactly what we need to do. Those who are wise shall so shine, halal, like the brightness of the sky. Those who lead many to righteousness shall shine like the stars forever and ever. So church, I have one question for us today. Will we shine the light of Christ into the world? With the way we live, the way we love, the way we serve, with the way we speak to each other. Will we shine in a way to everlasting life? Or will we wake to shame and everlasting content? God gives us a choice every day. I pray we shine the light of Christ into the, all the places that need to hear the good news of the gospel. I pray we shine the light of Christ to those who need to see it. We have neighbors and friends and family who are far from the Lord. People who are not in relationship with Jesus, who will shine the light into their lives? Christ calls you and me to do that. Scripture is clear. We are God's messengers. We're called to shine the light of Christ into the world. And yes, sometimes it will feel like we have been thrown into a fiery furnace. It will be hard. We might face pushback. Sometimes it will feel like we're in the lion's den. I'm not saying this is always easy. I know it's not. 
we are not alone. God is always with us. And friends, God will deliver us. Always. Jesus helps us understand Daniel's visions. In Matthew 24, he actually references this. Jesus says there will be wars and rumors of wars. But it says we're not to be alarmed, for this must take place before Christ returns. Jesus says things will get worse before they get better. I want to pick up at verse 12 going on to verse 14 it says and because of the increase of lawlessness lawlessness the love of many will grow cold but the one who endures to the end will be saved and the good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all the nations and then the end will come then in verse 42, Jesus reminds us that we must be ready because Christ will come again at an hour we do not expect. Picking up at verse 45, it says, Who then is the faithful and wise slave whom his master has put in charge of his household to give the other slaves their allowance of food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master will find at work when he arrives. Truly I tell you, he will put that one in charge of all his possessions. But if that wicked slave says to, to himself, my master is delayed, and he begins to beat his fellow slaves and eats and drinks with drunkards, the master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour that he does not know. He will cut him in pieces and put him with the hypocrites, for there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now that's a call to action if I ever heard one. Amen? Woo! Jesus is putting us in charge of his household. From the beginning of time until today, God wants one thing from us, to shine the light of Christ into the darkness. I want you to hear the Lord's instruction from Matthew 5, 14 through 16. He says, You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand. And as Jennifer said, we need to plug it in too, right, to the source. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do you hear that? Our good works are not for us to get the praise. They're for God to get the praise. We don't do things to, to be singled out. We do things because it brings honor and glory to his name. That's why we do what we do. When we experience God's saving grace, we become the light of the world. We aren't supposed to keep that light hidden. But how many of us say, oh, I don't want to talk about my faith, it's personal. Or, I, you know, I, I don't want to be pushy. Well, I don't want you to be pushy either. I want you to love Jesus. And I want you to love Jesus so much that you can't help but talk about it. There's a difference. That's what I'm calling us to do. I think Jesus is encouraging us to share the light of Christ with others. Yes, with words, but more often, we share the light of Christ with our actions, with the way we treat each other, the way we talk to each other. When people see that we live and we act and we talk differently than those who do not believe in Christ, then our lives bring glory to our Father in heaven. For example, how many times have we blown off the handle at the slightest thing, raise our voice in anger? When the peace of Christ reigns in our hearts, instead of lashing out, we turn inward. And we ask God to give us the strength to face the fiery furnace. And then we're able to speak in love. It changes us. 
But first, we have to surrender our will to the will of Christ. We have to realize that with one word, we can shape a life. With one wrong word, we can ruin a life. When we find ourselves in that place where the pressure is great, remember Daniel in the lion's den. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. I love the lyrics of a contemporary Christian song about faithful people of God and other moments where faith sustains us. Listen to these lyrics. There was another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free, there is a cross that bears the burden where another died for me. There was another in the fire. Friends, we are never alone. God is always with us. The light of Christ can help us find our way forward when it seems like there's no way out. In the backyard of my house, I have a lovely brick patio. I'm not really sure why they did this, but there's like several different places. There's three different places where the pavement is not even. There's like a very slight step, and I can't tell you how many times I've tripped over the rough places. Amen? Have you ever had something like that? And so what I did was I got one of those little posts that has a sunlight on top of it. It's powered solar light. And so it, it charges up during the day and then at night it shines that light. And I put that nearing the one that I tripped over most often. And now because of the light, I don't trip on the rocky places. The light of Christ is like that. When it shines in our lives, it keeps us from tripping on those rocky places. It shows us the way forward. God calls us to shine the light of Christ into the, wor into the world with the way we live and the way we act and the way we talk. May we bring glory to God. So church, will we shine the light of Christ into the world. May it be so in our lives today. Amen.